This is World Update. China's pledged $20 billion in credit for Africa over the next three years, trying to create closer ties and to increase trade. President Hu Jintao made that announcement at a summit in Beijing with leaders from different African nations. In recent years, China's emerged as Africa's main trading partner, and Mr Hu said cooperation should extend to other areas. China and Africa should increase coordination and cooperation in international affairs. We should jointly maintain the arms and principles of the UN charters, advocate democratization in international relations, and push forward with harmonious and balanced development of the world. We should oppose the practices of the big bullying the small, the strong domineering over the weak, and the rich oppressing the poor. China's President Hu Jintao. So is this a good thing for Africa? Greater prosperity for Africans or just more corruption and human rights abuses? Chris Kirubi is a Kenyan entrepreneur, industrialist and businessman. And he's in our Nairobi studio. And Gawaya Tegule is director of the Conference on Democracy in Africa. He's in Kampala. Thank you both of you for being with us. Uh, Mr Kirubi, first, uh, are you welcoming this kind of investment? This, to me, is the best news we could have received this year. It is also a wake-up call to the West to make sure that they are not completely made irrelevant in development in Africa. And how might that happen, actually? What, what's, is it a battle? Is it going to be a kind of great game for Africa? It's not a game. People in Africa are yearning for development. They are yearning for good health. They are yearning for development in agriculture, better schooling, better roads. And really, with the high populations that are emerging in Africa, we need education. We need all these things. And really, we're looking for friends who don't lecture to us, but come to the table to support us to get to that level of development. That's the point. Maybe the Western governments have lectured Africa, but they do bring democracy advice, training schemes for people running elections and so on. You wouldn't necessarily want to run elections the way the Chinese do them, would you? I, 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 <clears throat> I can position my friend from Kampala as one of the opponents maybe of uh, President Museveni, and therefore he is uh, agitated with several things, challenges they are having in Uganda. But seriously, you cannot democratize, you cannot make people enjoy quality of life if people are poor, if people have nothing to eat, if you do not have communications, if you do not have roads to be able to access people. How do you lecture to people who have nothing? Mr. Tegule? Um, I think one thing we need to understand here is that um, China, the Chinese are a government that have neither heart nor soul, and therefore they don't give a hoot about what the African people go through on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't care that uh, all the money that comes in as development aid is being stolen by those in power. They don't give a hoot that the people in power have no intention of getting out, and therefore they can do all they like, and that is why they're very comfortable, because the Chinese come here, they say, we shall give you all the money you like, but uh, we shan't ask any questions about your human rights, your democracy, your corruption, they don't give a may, about that. May I interject? And yes, that please. is where the problem I, is. I, I seriously like to object to that kind of notion and very unfair comment about the Chinese. All you need, my friend, is to come to Kenya and see the new roads, the yeah. whole city, well, the I have bypass to... roads. Indeed, the road and it's from blocking Mombasa. all the traffic, but everybody yes, hopes that to, eventually it'll I, come good. But I, I, you, I, you could forgive, sorry to interrupt, but you could forgive, Mr. Karubi, the, the skepticism of many in Africa that much of this 20 billion will actually get down to those people who live alongside those roads. You know, a lot of this money does go missing in corruption in the past. We, 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 do you know, all the money stolen by our leaders is warehoused in the Western countries? And why is that money not repatriated back to Africa? I think one has to be very careful when you make a parochial statement saying that those people must come here and manage our governance. We must manage our politics. We go for elections every five years. We elect our leaders. We have the power.
Right, so but the politics is up to Africans yes, and, and the money can um, come from China. We'll have to leave it there, but look, thank you so much for that contribution and that discussion. That's Ga Gawaya Tagule in Kampala. He's from the Conference on Democracy in Africa and Chris Karubi, a businessman thank you. who's in Nairobi. You can see why we need m longer period. This is World Update.